today I'm going to be attempting to create a game in Python. Although I have some prior Python knowledge, I've never actually used it to create a game, so today will be my first attempt. Python is a pretty basic language, so it can't be that hard, right? Well, today we're going to find out. This is how I created a memory game in Python. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is print a simple hello world, make sure I haven't lost my mind. Alright, I haven't, good. Next, I want to actually create a window that the player can interact with. 500 by 500 should do it. And fingers crossed this works. Alright, it does. Now we can do something just like this and fill the window. That should be a pretty much just pure white and there we go. Next thing I gotta do is actually create a loop to keep the game running. And now this simple code will check if we have clicked the um, the X button that looks like just like this. And if it is, then it will stop the loop and it will stop the game. And as you can see, it looks like it's working. So we click X and it should, in theory, uh, close out. But it's uh, it's not working. And I have no idea how to close this window. <laughs> it won't close all if four doesn't work either. I'm kind of screwed. Uh, I forgot to put event.type. Now it should work. And sure enough, that fixed the problem. Next, I just want to give the user a type of cursor in the game. This code should draw a black circle at the mouse position. Alright, so fingers crossed this worked. Oh, turns out I forgot to put parentheses. And yeah, um, I mean, it, it kind of works. So in theory, what we have to do is we have to actually reset the screen every single time we draw a new frame. So to do this, we're, gonna, we're just going to say window, I can spell window.fill, and then we're just going to refill it with the white color. That way, it kind of refreshes the screen every single time. And now we should see that it works. I'm just going to make it just a bit smaller so it isn't as big. There we go. So the whole idea is that the game flashes a certain sequence of colors on the screen. And then the player has to then re-enter that sequence. And if they get it right, then they move on to the next level. So that's what I've got to try to create. And now that I've relearned how to draw rectangles, we should be good to go. So now I'm going to create these six rectangles that are going to be in the game. And in theory, these should be the correct six rectangles. Now it's time to actually draw them. But before I do that, I've simply created a list that has the colors and then the rectangles in them so I can simply loop through to draw them. It just makes the whole process easier. And that should be about it. Let's see if it works. And as you can see, it draws it. The cursor is hidden behind the rectangles and they're a little bit small, so let me fix that. There's a cursor fixed, but the rectangles are going to be a little bit trickier. And that should hopefully do it. And as you can see, the rectangles are bigger, but I think I want to make a script that will automatically draw the rectangles for me with a set width and stuff like that. So all I got to do is write the function with the correct syntax, of course, and code it up. Before we do that, I would actually like to add a margin and window size variable. That way I can pass in values to use inside this function. So the margin would be something like 40 and the window size would be 500 by 500. And then I can use these values to then draw the rectangles at the right size. Next, I have to figure out the actual size that the rectangles have to fit in. So I'm simply going to take window size minus and then margin multiplied by two. So the way this works is we simply take the window size and then we subtract it by the margins to figure out how much we actually have for the rectangles. So this space X value is simply how much we have on this X axis. And because they're squares, we don't need to figure out how long the side should be for the Y axis. Because as you see, once we know the X, we can just use the same value for the Y. But we do still need to have a margin Y that we can figure out how to position it on the screen. And with all that, we should be good to actually finish coding this up. Now, in theory, this should draw the top three rectangles. So let's go ahead and call it right before our loop. I'm going to set a margin of 40 on the x-axis and a margin of, again, 40 on the y-axis with a window size of 500. And when we click play, hopefully it works. Nope. Nope, it definitely did not. Now let's see if it'll work. Why? Now I think about it, it's because I actually deleted the thing that draws the rectangles. And with this minor fix, it should work. Well, after looking into it, it's because I actually only drew three of the rectangles. So when this tried to loop around for the final three, it didn't have any data to draw the rectangles. So with that, I'll just go ahead and draw them in manually. And by manually, I mean without a loop. Hopefully, this should work. And there we go, we have three rectangles that are perfectly margined from the edges. Now all that's left to do is draw the next three rectangles. And this second loop should do the trick. Now all that's left to do is to re-add this loop. Now with the loop re-added in, it should work. The problem was, I was adding these last three recs to the wrong position in the list. So if I simply add three, it should work. And sure enough, here are our rectangles. Now we can mess around with these margin values and change the way the rectangles are positioned. If we set this margin Y to 80, we can see that the positions should change. 
I like this look, but I would like to make the window just a little bit bigger. So let's simply change the size to an 800 by 800, and then when we draw the rectangles, tell it that it's an 800 sized window. And yep, it worked just as expected. This is working amazing, but next is the trickiest part. We actually have to be able to click these, and there's not really a built-in function, so we have to build it all from scratch. So with our cursor here, we have to be able to figure out when the mouse enters each square. To do this, we have to be able to store all of these rectangle positions, and then do the math to check whether the mouse is inside of them. To do this, I have to be able to store the rect positions. So first I'm going to get the mouse, then I'm going to check if the left button is pressed, and if it is, then I'm going to call touching rect. And inside this touching rect function is where I'm going to decide if the mouse is touching a rectangle. And now this function is finally all coded up. It took me like 50 minutes to code this thing. I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. I kept debugging it, and I finally realized that I had an operator flipped. Sometimes the problems are literally right in front of you. And as you can see, when we test it, it works amazingly. You can only click one of them, and now when the cursor is correctly in the rectangle, it selects the right one. Just to give you a rundown, we take each individual square, start X and start Y, index and in Y, and we check if the mouse is within that position, and if it is, we return the index, and then we then set that index to selected. And then whenever we loop through to draw the rectangles, if we are in the selected index, then we just draw a border around it to show it's selected. Simple, but it took me absolutely forever to code up. With that out of the way, it's now finally time to start coding the memory game itself. What I mean by that is finally implementing the code that flashes the sequence on screen and then allows the player to enter it in. So first I'm going to add a text display here, that way we can tell the user what to do. This code should do the trick, and when we run the project, we can see we have a memory game text here at the bottom. Now I can actually put different text in here, if I put something like, hello, and then game is fine. We click play, then you see hello game at the bottom. So I'm going to use this to prompt the player to do certain things depending on where we are in the game. So now I'm going to code up a script that randomly flashes a sequence on the screen. So now the code is finally finished, and before I show you how I did it, I'm going to actually run the project to show you that it works. Now, after three seconds, I'm, it's going to flash a pre-coded sequence of one, two, three, four, five, six, and then after that, it will be at random. So as you can see, I've pre-coded in the first six rectangles for it to flash at the beginning of the sequence. This is formatted this way because it's just how lists work in Python. Basically, it's going to flash the sequence in this list, and whenever we have the real game, it's not going to have anything in this list. And then, so it's going to flash this sequence, and then once we get on to more levels, it's going to have more numbers in this sequence. And these numbers will be generated at random. Basically, you'll have a sequence that gets longer and longer as you progress in the game. But now that that's done, it's now actually time to add in the levels. So now I have successfully added levels. As you can see, the level is one, and when we click play, after waiting three seconds, it flashes one color. But see, if we change this number to something like four, it should flash four times. And I've also removed this color sequence list, so it should flash randomly. And as you can see, it flashes four times. And once it's done, it says enter the sequence, and we can click the different squares. Now at the time, this currently does nothing, but that's what I'm gonna code next. And now this new code should implement that. If we click play, wait for it to tell us the sequence. All right, so it's purple, and then it enters a new one, this time with two colors. Click this one and this one, and then it will go to the next sequence. Now it has three colors. As you can see down here, we have correct, correct, correct. If we click the wrong one, it'll say incorrect. But at the moment, that doesn't reset us, and that's what I want to implement next. But before we do that, I would like to actually show you how I implemented this level system. Basically, I just checked if we clicked the correct color in the sequence, and if we did, we printed correct, and we moved on to the next level and the next stage. It would then redraw the stage out with the next color to continue on the level. But now we need to actually get it to restart. And now, this should be working. If we click play, let it load up, whenever it flashes the sequence, and if we click the right sequence, it will continue on, as seen before. But let's say we click the wrong sequence. It says wrong down here, it says restarting, and then it flashes us a brand new sequence. This is all great, but whenever I click the right sequence, I want it to show a little text at the bottom that says correct. So to do this, we're gonna go into our code, and when we get it right, instead of just immediately going back to the flashing stage, we're going to create a brand new stage. This is gonna be called correct, because I just don't have any other name for it. And whenever it says remember this, we're gonna say correct, and then we're gonna set it to a nice green. Now when we click play and click the correct sequence, it says correct. But we're gonna be stuck here because we haven't actually told the code what to do whenever we switch to the state correct. So first we're gonna reset the time, that way we can tell the game when to go back to the flashing stage. Then we're actually gonna tell the game what to do when we're in the correct stage. So we're gonna set current text to equal, and then we're gonna say memory game 
I can type. And then we're gonna set the current text color to be black. And from here, all we're doing is setting the game state to start. So I'll just copy and paste this and then resetting the timer. Basically, all this will do is go back to the flashing stage. So now when we click play, it should show us the sequence. Once we insert the correct sequence, it should say correct at the bottom, and then it should flash the next sequence on the screen. And there we go. It did just that. It says correct, and we will be able to continue on. When we get it wrong, it simply restarts, so that still works. To be honest, this game is nearly done, but there's one more thing I want to add. Basically, all I want to do is just add a simple score here at the bottom. That way, the player knows what their score is. And that, in theory, should be fairly simple. We can just use this level variable that I've already created because this is basically the score. And just because I'm lazy, I'm going to create a new function called show score. This will basically just do the exact same thing this does. We can simply copy and paste and change position just slightly. We can change this color to a nice, let's say blue. And in this text right here, we can simply pass in our string of level. This will make sure that it's in the correct formatting to actually create the text. And now in theory, all we have to do after that is simply call show score every single loop and it should display. And if we get the right answer, we move on to level two. Now the problem is this actually, if we click play again, starts at score of one, but we don't want that. We can simply subtract one from level and then we get our score and level minus one. And that should fix our issues. Yep. There we go. Score of zero. And if we get it right, we have a score of one. Now, just to make this a little bit easier to read so the player actually knows what this number means, I'm just going to have a little text here that says score, and then it says colon, and then the actual score that you have. And to do that, it's pretty simple. All I have to do is create a string and say score, if I can spell, if I, if I can spell, there we go. And then we click plus string, and it should add it on. Yep, there we go, score of zero. Now, as we play, we can get it right, just like that. And then we can also get it wrong. And this will reset our score and reset the game. And that is it, the game is fully completed. At 180 lines of code, that is how I made a memory game in Python. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and let me know if you want to see more videos like this, because I really enjoyed making it. Anyways, hope you guys have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you later.